Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Po, and today I'm doing week seven of my 2021 reads. This week I read a romance novel, some picture books, and I DNF'd a book. First, I finished Breathless by Beverly Jenkins. This is a historical romance and is the sequel to Forbidden, which I read a couple of years ago. I'd been meaning to continue on with the series and a couple of months ago, Priscilla at Bookie Charm, who I will link below, had talked about Beverly Jenkins and I was just reminded that I needed to continue with this series. So I picked this up this month and I think that Beverly Jenkins just does an amazing job when it comes to historical fiction. The history in her historical romances is so strong. So this takes place in the 1880s in Arizona and we follow Portia who is black and a bookkeeper and she wants to start her own business. She has been working for her aunt and uncle who own a kind of luxury hotel um, in Arizona and she wants to branch out and do her own thing and into town comes a cowboy who is um, very attractive and you know really gets her to come out of her shell. So there is so much in this story about that time period, about the 1880s in Arizona that really talks about fascinating aspects of being black in the West, things like racism, but also things like the black suffragette movement, um, things like the black women's community organizations to support each other and also the support that they send towards indigenous communities. It talks about Geronimo and other things like that. There's so much in here about the social dynamics and about the side of the Wild West that you don't necessarily see very often in more white centric uh, Wild West stories. So all of that was amazing. The romance itself was okay, although didn't necessarily um, work as well for me. There were a couple of tropes in this, which are very, very common in historical romance, but they just didn't quite work. Uh, Portia, who is this you know, bookkeeper, is very, very career oriented, which I love, but also excessively naive in some ways, excessively innocent. Um, and the cowboy, you know, her romantic partner is very experienced with women. And there's some aspects of her being overly innocent that just didn't work for me. Things like uh, him doing something that arouses her and him saying, oh, that makes you aroused, doesn't it? And she says, no. And he says, yes, it does. And on the inside, she thinks, yes, it does. And I just don't, I didn't really like that kind of interactions, especially um, there were so many times when he was portrayed as knowing her better than she knew herself. And then she would kind of later on agree with that. And that just, that dynamic just really didn't work for me. But um, I loved the history. I loved the family dynamics. There was so much about this romance the novel that I just really did enjoy, even if the dynamic between the two main people was just maybe not so much my style, but I didn't have problems exactly with it, just not so much my, my style. So overall, I gave this three and a half out of five stars, and I am looking forward to the next book in the series as well. Then I finished a couple of picture books, starting with Senorita Mariposa by Ben Gudersheimer, illustrated by Marcos Almada Rivero. So this is a nonfiction sort of nature writing picture book that is bilingual English and Spanish that I heard about from Priscilla at Bookie Charm, uh, again, who I will link below and who also has a video recommending Latinx picture books. So that is linked below. And this is all about the flight of the monarchs from the north to the south every year so that kind of um, journey that they make and talking about things like uh, how beautiful they are how strong they are how amazing they are and it's done in a poetic type of way it's, it's basically poetry um, and I thought that very interesting topic um, where I grew up was actually one of the places that monarch butterflies wintered um, in California and so that was definitely a part of my childhood was seeing all of the monarch butterflies covering the trees so i liked that part of it uh the illustrations were okay not so much my style the poetry was okay not so much my style but i really did like the content so i gave this also three and a half out of five stars the other picture book that I read this week was By Penguin by Seo Lee, which is um, originally a book that was published in Korea and then was published by Levine Querido in the US. Um, I, I don't know that it's exactly translated because there are literally two words for sounds and that's it. Um, there's no other words. It's basically just a picture book, but I thought it was excellent. The story is about a little penguin who gets on a piece of ice that breaks away 
from the land and kind of goes on some adventures and it is really adorably illustrated and I just kind of like the story that it tells. Um, it The ending was one of those things that just really, really worked for me. I laughed out loud and then I had to give it to Sush to read because he was curious about what I laughed at and I'm, I'm still very amused when I think about how that book ended. I actually really loved this and I gave it five stars. Then I did DNF one book this week, which was Miss Meteor by Taylor K. Mejia and Anna Marie McElmore. This is a book that I'd heard really good things about from a couple of different people, and I actually highly recommend you check out their reviews. Adri at Perpetual Pages, as well as Cynthia at Book Whimsy, did great reviews for this, so I will link those below. And I think that I saw tons of really awesome things about this book, but in the end, there was just a little bit too much angst in it for me, so I ended up DNFing it at 40 percent. So basically this is a contemporary magical realism story about um, two friends growing up in a small town uh, in the West, one of whom is made out of literal stardust and sort of dealing with some breakdowns in their friendship and dealing with some prejudices in their hometown as the one made out of stardust wants to become a uh, beauty pageant queen. So there was a lot of really interesting topics in this, just a lot about the kinds of racism and prejudice that are faced, even in communities that think that they're accepting, uh, a lot of it kind of being underlying or microaggressions or just lack of access, all sorts of things. So I thought that there was tons of really great content in here, but a lot of that drama of the breakdown of friendships, um, some mean girls, some overly villainous, selfish uh, racist characters in the town there's just a lot of that and a lot of sort of uh, self-doubt of some of the characters that was uh, just too much drama for me too much angst and I find that in general I struggle anytime there's uh, overwhelming emotions in a book it just it's too much for me kind of like food that is too spicy um, some books have too much angst for me and that was the case with this one so I think that there's a lot of good things to um, be found in this book it just wasn't quite my style Okay, so that's everything that I read and DNF'd this week. If you guys have read any of these books, if you have any thoughts, any recommendations, anything you wanna share with me, go ahead, leave me a comment down below.